The Spitfire is, without a doubt, the most famous British wartime fighter. Early in its illustrious career, though, its highly acclaimed Merlin engine had a minor problem. Typical of the slightly eccentric brains at Farnborough was a Miss Tilly Schilling, who managed to come up with a solution. Would the Battle of Britain have been won without her? Beatrice, or Tilly Schilling, was born on the 8th of March 1909, and as a young child she'd spend her pocket money on practical tools and was always curious about engines. In 1926 she took up an electrical engineering apprenticeship at a company run by Margaret Partridge, and was later encouraged to take a degree from Manchester University in electrical engineering. Margaret even arranged for Tilly to get an interest-free loan from the Women's Engineering Society, and she enrolled in 1929 as one of the only two female students. A few years later, in 1936, she was accepted to the Royal Aircraft Establishment and, over the next few years, would become a specialist in aircraft engines and would even get married to a man called George Naylor. Then, in 1940, a problem arose. When hurricanes and spitfires had to nosedive during aerial combat, the negative g-forces would flood and carburettors, meaning the engine, would stall. And even worse, the German planes never had this issue. Tilly came up with a brilliant solution that, in actuality, was quite simple. A small disc with a hole in the middle, called an RAE restrictor, but nicknamed Tilly's office, would restrict and regulate the flow of fuel, thus eliminating the risk of stalling. In 1941, she would lead a small team to RAF bases around the country, installing the RAE restrictor on Spitfires and Hurricanes, and it remained standard in those planes until 1943, when it was modified. Once installed, it was possibly the start of the turning point in the Battle of Britain. After the war, she remained at the RAE, but moved to the Supersonics Division and later to the Guided Weapons Department. In 1948, she was awarded an OBE for her wartime contributions and, in 1969, she was retired as a Senior Principal Scientific Officer. She was even awarded an Honorary Doctorate from the University of Surrey as recognition for her achievements and remained in the aerospace engineering community until she passed away in 1990 at the age of 81 from spine cancer. In Farnborough, she's being remembered through the Tilly Schilling pub, which has a large plaque outside detailing her vital contributions to the war effort. She also has a building named after her at both the Royal Holloway University and the University of Coventry. Throughout history, many women have made huge contributions to aviation, but are always overlooked. Amy Johnson was the first woman to fly solo from London to Australia. Bessie Coleman was the first black woman to hold a pilot's licence and Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Even now, women make up only 20% of the workers in most aviation jobs and the introduction of women into the industry has been stagnant. However, even when there was only one other woman in her university course, Tilly still managed to more than excel in her field and become one of the most important women in all of aviation. How and why did you get into aviation? Um, quite a while back when I was 13, my dad thought it would be a good idea to get me a trial flying lesson in a PA-28 at East Midlands. We all went for this wonderful flight around the airport. It was quite fabulous, actually. Um, but I do distinctly remember looking at my instructor and just thinking, God, I would really love to have that job. From that moment, it was really sort of a, you know, how do I get that job? What do I need to do? And I mean, you know, I, at the time I was 13, so there's there's not really, you know, there's not really much you can start when you're at 13 other than other than the want. So, yeah, it was it was um, it was quite a moment. Uh, what advice would you give to other women interested in aviation? Um, I'd say join join the communities, do the research. You know, you've got to I think with aviation, it's something you've really got to want. You can't just be half in, half out. And then speaking on that, how do you want aviation to change for women going into the future? Definitely would be amazing to see it become more accessible, especially for, for younger women. I mean, when I was 13, um, I I didn't hear the phrase once women can become pilots. And I just yeah. feel like there needs to be that accessibility and just exposure to it for younger people. How and why did you get into aviation? Um, so at the time I was working, I was 16 at the time. So my mum and dad got me a gift voucher for like a local flying school. Um, just quite random to be honest. I was working in an office at the time as an apprentice. So 
um, my dad was training, so he thought, oh, why don't we do this for my birthday? And what challenges have you faced as a woman in aviation? Have you found you've had any obstacles or anything? I think there's still the stigma that there's always been, but I'd like to think now, I mean, I, when I did my ATPLs, I, I was in a class with 14 other students and they were all male. I was the only girl. Okay. Um, but to be honest, I didn't feel any different to any of the others. They were all really nice. I've had female flight instructors at my training school as well. So, so it's nice to see them coming through. And is there anything you want to change for women going into the future in terms of aviation? Um, we're, maybe not women specific, but I think there needs to be more scholarships to make it more inclusive for all to try and get into it. Because I know for me, I've never really thought of a career. It's not something that's spoken about in school enough. Um, so I think if there was more opportunities financially to get more people into it, especially females, because we're such a minority, yeah. then, um, yeah, I think that needs to be the case.